as I've said, the state of religion and young people 2023, it'll release this fall. So this is previewing what's to come and this resource will, will be offered alongside it, the recording from today's conversation. But we, we want to understand how are young people ages 13 to 25 defining the sacred? Because that, that term might not even be in everyone's vocabulary. So the way that we've defined it for our qualitative and quantitative research, as well as the reporting we're doing is uh, sacred moments or sacred encounters we define as experiences of deep wonder, mm -hmm. awe, uh, gratitude, deep truth, mm -hmm. and or interconnectedness which I think is beautiful. I'm inspired by that, that definition alone. I think it's expansive in some really helpful ways as well as um, particular. So our research found, I'm looking at my notes here so I get the data right, but our nationally representative research found that 55% of young people, regardless of religious affiliation, so this would include atheists, this would include nuns as meaning folks with no particular religious or spiritual identity, including those folks, they report having had a sacred moment in their life, 55%. I think that's pretty significant that, and that might surprise people about Gen Z actually, that more than half of young people today report having a sacred moment. So, you know, you've already said you feel like your, your job as a faith leader is to invite these moments. So, what what does that actually look like and whether someone's a you know a vocational minister like yourself or not how can folks who care about um accompanying young people how can they create space for these sacred encounters to occur and how can virtual spaces like the series you offered via instagram how can those you know those daily invitations how can those really connect to in-person spiritual practices for these potential sacred moments. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I think, um, um, you know, I, I, I think something about faith is deeply intuitive and something about the, the spiritual life is, is very intuitive. I think people are often doing it so naturally, what, what, they, what they get intuitively sometimes is that what they're doing naturally is actually faith and God stuff and that, you know, when you are in the woods and you're taking a walk and you're feeling this sense of interconnectedness to nature or, you know, that that's what God feels like. I mean, and, and you know, um, when you're with another person, when you're on a first date and you feel flutters and you feel, you know, something stirring, it's like, I think that's a God kind of a thing too. And I think so much of what people do in their daily lives is kind of a God kind of thing. And, and one of the things I can do as a faith leader is just help people name experiences as holy, which they already experience holy. So I do this more often in my praying than anything else. Um, I'll, you know, I, I do, you know, kind of a very long uh, kind of thank you God list for every prayer I ever do. And it, you know, people laugh. I think it's good to laugh during prayer too. But, but you, know, you know, thank God for the, the sweet milk that's left after you've eaten all the cereal. Thank God for mornings where you're just in your pajamas doing the crossword puzzle. Thank you, God, for presents on Christmas morning. Thank you, you know, for, you know, for birds that wake us up singing. And thank you, you know, just any silly thing you can be thankful for. I, I, it's, it's sort of name parts of life that are beautiful and good in a way. And people see that the emotional connection they have to that, kind of the raw material that holy encounters are made of, and they're already there. They can just be a little more present to it. It's there. And so I thought it was really interesting to me. We, we did confirmation last Sunday, which is when we sort of our right of, uh, you know, young people, kids becoming sort of young people, adults, sort of 14 year olds. And, and you know, the, we had, you know, eight boys that we asked them to write their own personal faith statements, not just, you know, can you sign on the dotted line that, you know, you believe what the minister believes or the church believes or your parents believe, but they have to write their own statement of faith. And without a doubt, almost every boy, 14 year old boys, you know, they, they were using language that is that I've said in prayer. It's like they, they're, they're hearing something, that sense of just modeling that part of what faith looks like is being present to the world with an, 
with a sense of wonder and gratitude and being mindful of the call to compassion, they reflected that back. I mean, it's like you're hearing 14 year old boys talk about bird song and it's like, yeah, you know, that came from, some, you know, or, or just like the, the way they think about God. It's like, no, I can help help them see that they can just go live their life and they can have God right there with them. And that, that felt like so powerful for me as a faith leader, as like, it's, it's really that simple. It's just helping people see what they're doing is already, you know, on, they're on the way.